Welcome to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leaf Exmoor, and you know I've got everything to keep you up to date with everything Rocket League. On today's show, we've got coverage and highlights of the Oceanic Major. Double Tap features JNAPs, and you know we got all that fun action in Breakout. Now, little birdie told me the NFL draft happened over the weekend, and to celebrate that, the return of the Gridiron Limited Time Mode in Rocket League was returned back, and the NFL Fan Pack. If you're a fan of the limited time mode or just NFL fan in general, I really hope that you guys got on, logged on, played the mode, and there was also an NFL player banner and an avatar border available for unlock. So I hope you guys got in on that. But that is enough time for Gridiron. It's now time for the Grid. Watch as we have all the highlights from Down Under. The first of the RLCS Spring Majors has concluded, and Oceania has crowned its seasonal champion. If you're keyed into the region's competition, you can probably guess who it is. But regardless, the tournament was packed with some outstanding plays and exciting turnabouts well worth praising. The group stage is viewed by some as merely a prelude to the playoffs, but in the OC Major it featured many of the event's closest matches. Group A was a showcase of Ground Zero Gaming's dominant stranglehold on the Pacific Sea, as the team swept through undefeated, ending up with a whopping plus 10 game differential, dropping a mere two rounds in the entire stage. Meanwhile, GZ's rivals, Cringe Society, were hot on their heels. They only lost one match in the group stage, to GZ and former teammate Torsos nonetheless, though they did succeed at being one of the only two teams to take a game off of them. Cringe Society's other matches were neck and neck affairs, all coming down to the last possible game in a display of the trio's incredible perseverance under pressure. Special mention must go to their showdown with Riot though, and the final nail-biting game which saw the scores climb higher and higher until the explosive conclusion with an overtime kickoff goal. Group B was another story altogether. Without an overwhelming force like GZ in the round robin, it was anyone's game, and competition was much tighter as a result. While Renegades would emerge ahead of the pack, the grand irony is that they actually lost their set against runners-up Mindfreak. It was only by virtue of their slightly higher game differential, they only lost four rounds to Mindfreak 6, that they achieved top C. Though their solid play and oppressive offense in the matches they did win proved them worthy of the spot. When it came time for the playoffs, GZ predictably swept through their side of the bracket, eliminating Team Eros and Dire Wolves to make it to the Grand Finals. Their final game against Eros was particularly brutal. A 7-0 steamroll as if to remind the audience that yes, this is the team who's won nearly half of all regional events and majors since Season X began. Meanwhile, Cringe Society, determined for a rematch with the reigning champs, faced stiff competition against Renegades. Cringe Society and Renegades faced off knowing that whoever won this would get their spot clinched into the championships. With all that on the line, Cringe Society started strong, winning three games in a row to put themselves at match point. But Renegades, determined to make a grand finals a clash between the top two seeds, weren't going down without a fight. A startling overtime win was the second win they needed, nearly mounting a reverse sweep by taking the next three games for themselves. It all came down to Game 7, but this time it was Cringe Society's turn to fight back avoiding the choke with a 2-0 victory to take them to Grand Finals, and secure themselves a spot in the OCE Championships. Unfortunately, the rest of the Grand Finals was almost a foregone conclusion. Ground Zero walked away with yet another 4-0 sweep, despite Cringe Society's best efforts to force two games into overtime. Try as they might, they simply couldn't accomplish the Sisyphean task of tangling with the region's top talent. Ready, Ground Zero may have just done it. 10 seconds, they have done it. They're going to take the major home. Two majors, seven events, all of the prize money, and all of the pride as well. Ground Zero, your major champions, and they're going to go in so much in the lead, heading towards those championships. The gap between Ground Zero and the rest of OC at the moment is just crazy how large it is right now. And so the first of four Spring Majors came to a close. With a team as dominant as GZ setting the standard, it's about time to see if the next champs can match their performance and grit as we race closer and closer to the end of Season X. And now joining me on the line, it's David Lane, a.k.a. Yummy Cheeseman. Buddy, welcome to the show. Hey, it's nice to be here. It's uh, It's been at least five minutes since I talked to you, Lee. <laughs> we are. If you can't tell, but I still got my suit on. We just finished up the Oceanic Major, so we'll get to that in a moment. 
First off, I got to talk to you about the weekend. Um, it was a big one for you. You won four awards across the broadcast. <laughs> Best player. You had so many other uh, accolades. How does it feel to be one of the greatest casters in esports of all time? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it feels good. I love getting player awards for, for <laughs> yeah. no reason. Uh, but it was a great weekend. I had a lot of fun. It's always good hanging out with you folks as well. Uh, it's good to have Jake along for the ride. And most importantly, we had tons of good Rocket League. Yeah, I think that's the the coolest thing. Uh, we had a lot on the line for a couple teams here. We got to see another be dominant as uh, as per usual. We we'll get to that mm -hmm. in a moment, though. I want to talk about um, you specifically in the season. You know, the Oceanic Region, along with the others, had a lot more games during Season X. And now, as we round out with just the championships ahead, you know, you can kind of have that perspective to look back and see. Okay, that was that was a lot of games, specifically because you guys casted them all you and jake everything there was yeah. a lot of rocket league for you guys how do you feel at the end of it all i mean like that that had to be a lot for you guys well it's good i'm hoping that there's no weekend again where we do seven best of sevens in one day <laughs> uh that's like eight hours straight of casting uh -huh. i'm not a marathon talker but i did get quite good by the end of the season of being able to last that long so if you guys are wanting to uh learn how to talk for a long time I guess cast grand finals over and over again. But uh, yeah, I guess I always look to those weekends with dread. I never really looked forward to them at some points. Obviously, like it's fun casting and that's like, yeah, uh -huh. a dream job. But when you know that it's going to send you packing for the next week, tired yeah. and miserable, can be a bit much. So good to have a, a major weekend where I get to sit back on the analyst desk easy job if you guys don't know <laughs> leafx has the easiest laziest job of all time he sits there for seven hours but he talks for about three minutes that entire time hey that whole time though i have to make sure you guys are keeping it together and i gotta deal with gibbs we what don't do you mean? need you Leaf. what do you mean easiest <laughs> job i'm dealing with gibbs over here talk about an easy True. job he just built out numbers that no one listens to so. Yeah, but the fact that you're doing it remotely now, that's a huge advantage. You no longer have to smell Gibbs. <laughs> Brilliant. I like it. We could do a whole interview bashing Gibbs here, but we got to talk about some of that oceanic play because you know it inside mm -hmm. and out here. Specifically, let's talk to the majors. Um, you know, we did, uh, we just covered it in the segment before this Ground Zero Gaming, where you're champions in a dominating fashion. They only dropped one game on the entirety of this major in that second day on the bracket. Actually, in the whole weekend, they foiled their group stage as well. You know, coming into this, were you knowing the rest of the region, were you fully confident that would happen? Or did you think maybe a team would have stepped up to the challenge during this major? My only doubt was that maybe they'd get off to a really slow start. So if any team was going to take off a few games from them, it would be Eros at the start of the day. The moment that they 4-0'd and Amphis was getting goal after goal, mm -hmm. that's when I knew that there was no chance to anyone else really in the major. The ground zero were always going to take it no matter who goes through. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's It just seems ridiculous right now that um, how much they're they're dominated. We're kind of talking mm -hmm. about them and, and comparing them to a BDS. Uh, over in in the European region, just in in the results and how they play on the field too, because this team does seem to be a, a team that knows how to pull out those wins. Do you find that 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 is the truth? That you know sometimes maybe they start slow but they adapt throughout. Yeah, it's funny because all of the big three often start out slow. You know, Renegades, Cringe Society, and and Ground Zero often mm -hmm. lose the first couple of games. But I think Ground Zero more than anyone else will tend to just get to a point in a series where they've figured it out. They know what their opponents are doing, or they just step it up a notch, and then they win every single game from there. So usually if you want to beat Ground Zero, you can't make it a long series, because they'll eventually step up. you got to get them in that maybe 4-0, 4-1 kind of scoreline. Now I want to talk about some of the other teams uh, showing up here too, because that whole entire quarterfinals on Championship Sunday was... Uh, basically four rows. Riot Gaming was the only losing team that took a game off their opponents. So it does seem like uh, it's that big three or maybe big four. Uh, well, maybe not because it seemed like Dire Wolf stepped up to the plate when, when most people didn't expect them to. Um, you know, but it, was that expected as well? That, that those first rounds, those quarterfinals were so dominating across the board? Yeah, I mean, I called that basically there was not much upset potential in any of the quarterfinals. Direwolves 4 owing Mind Freak was a huge, huge, yeah. huge upset. Uh, and in fact, I would say Mind Freak had the chance to kind of 
cement themselves in back into that top four area. You know, their last real success was in the first major that they got that surprise win in, uh, and they haven't done too much since. They've looked really good lately, but today was a really bad day for them. They didn't play too well at all. Dire Wolves a huge surprise, but not so much in the conversation right now until they get a new core roster. They were playing with their sub. The fact that you 4-0 with a sub is yeah. absolutely <laughs> insane. But uh, yeah, it is really, really, really cemented now with Cringe Society getting that top two yeah. that there is a big three once again. Yummy, I just want to say thank you so much for joining me and I uh, can't wait to see you again. Thank you. strikes me as the kind of guy that would do that. Here he goes again to the back wall, setting up Torsos, and there's another assist. Look at how they move up the field, Stax. It's in one stroke. They don't stop. Torsos gets the re after dishing it out to Amphis. And again, Northwood stopped at a tremendous attack out of the Bulls. A shot going for more. Will he find Ooh. it? Go, shot, go! Unbelievable! South Florida take the lead! Eventually it had to break down, right? They had so many great looks at the net. Benton's it over the top, onto the backboard, double commit from the defenders, but they pinch the daylights out of it. And here comes Zayn, what a pass! Snowy the block, takes oh. over the ball, and he'll get the save! What a play, and an excellent read from Mindfreak to give it to him, but the defense holds from camera. Oh, and Tango also had the read coming off the backboard, and for him to follow it up and get the 50-50, One heck of a series, and the goal line defense for Mind Freak has been getting tested. And that's what we expect. Canberra, they were the ones who got oh. that goal line shot and that buzzer beater. Tango, he's got a chance to do it again. Oh. Vortex, if you find the accuracy, but it was saved from Requiem. They are still alive, and we're going into OT. If I've learned anything just from watching three and a half minutes of this game is two goals is nothing for either of these teams. We have gone back and forth, and what a shot! Life is brilliant, and Fever makes it a one-goal game. What a way to get your hattie. He puts it into the corner, feeds himself for the double, and look at that angle. Right? Huge response from UT Dallas. Oh, He's don't oh baby! My, yeah. What? Yes! Dalton, how, 92 miles per hour like a major league baseball player. I'm a little concerned. I mean, it might be too late, but at this point, though, I do like up oh, oh, uh, I don't like well, that. Well, <laughs> you know Ampis is going to get his. You can have 10 goals, Grin Society, but Ampis is going to score at least one. Always have to fight off the temptation to drop everything and just go play Rocket League after watching Hot Shots. I usually can't because thankfully we have Breakout afterwards that quells that temptation after seeing what usually happens in here. First up, Galaxy Goal puts it in reverse. And that shows the exact importance of a good recovery. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can recover, you can do things like that. It just comes after, no extra work. Just learn to drive backwards. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Sticking with the reverse theme though, Murdoch pulls off this totally on purpose fake. If you don't know what's coming, 
then they don't know what's coming. That if I would be very sad if they were not spamming calculated after that one. That was just ridiculous. Moving on though, Zuby Live has found a new game mode in Rocket League. It's bumper cars. Man, the Rocket League meta is getting real weird. Uh, just go for the car instead of the ball, I guess. Our next one, though, comes from Infinistic, whose teammate did not do him any favors. I'd like to say that that's what you just have to deal with in Platt, saving not only your opponent's shots, but your teammate's shots, but oftentimes that happens through every rank, sadly enough. Finally, Optimism said that the smoke here made him look like an idiot. And, hopefully now, you've learned the dangerous lesson of demoing someone on your goal line. That's what happens. Up next, Double Tap, though, has the story of G2's JNAP, so let's dive into that instead. Some players go in and out of teams like a revolving door, but few can claim to be the everlasting backbone of their squad like G2's JNAPs. From his early days hitting the weekly tournament grind to finding success at the apex of North America, the killer Canuck has worked hard to leave his mark on the RLCS. 2016 was a year of firsts for JNAP. Though he wouldn't compete in the RLCS quite yet, the young player started making a name for himself in the Rocket League community via his participation in numerous weekly events and smaller competitions. His big break would finally come the following year, when he competed in the RLCS Season 3 North American Qualifier for a spot in the Championship Series, under the banner of G2 Esports, the team he still represents to this very day. Team passing plays from G2, all around, I thought every member from G2 contributed to this win. And here's that double touch play from JNAPS, just all around great performance from everyone on G2. Yeah, and with JNAPS, most people are not gonna realize uh, he's a big part of G2 because there's a big name like Kronobi on the team and Rizzo who are both extremely popular players but like as the season goes on like you're gonna see JNAP's name getting bigger and bigger and bigger because he's a phenomenal player. While he had no trouble securing a seat at the table, JNAP's would fall just short of attending the World Championship in his first year of league play as G2 unfortunately failed to move on to the LAN. He did perform better in Season 4 though as G2 took 4th place in both the Regional and the World Championship. Oh, One player at a time committed from PSG, that's going to start rolling all the way in. And an impossible task has been made even more difficult. We've got Ferret to aim for. Ferret plays it straight down. Bluey, though, arrives too early. It's going to go to the other end of the pitch. And that will all but confirm it. But they stepped up this season. And they will take out PSG. And they're going to move on to the top four in the RLCS World Championships. JNAPS closed out his first year under G2 with a bang. At E-League's first ever Rocket League tournament in December of 2017, JNAPS and company shocked the world, cutting through an insanely stacked bracket filled with Rocket League legends to claim the $70,000 grand prize in the name of G2 Esports. But the pass is coming through right now for Gale Force. The Rizzo Kronovi looking to team up. 18 seconds left. They just got to hold on here, and the victory is theirs. JNAPS looking for Kronovi. Turbo Pulse puts it down to Vilapana in a deep cherry pick position. It's Turbo he gets Pulse. The shot. But the save comes through, and G2 gets it away. Final six seconds. Five, four. They play it out. Turbo Pulse picks it up. He's got Vilapana to work with, but they have to keep it in the air. It doesn't happen. G2 are the E League champions. This impressive win granted JNAP's momentum, which carried him into 2018 on Gilded Wings. G2's first major of the year was DreamHack Leipzig, which they just barely missed out on winning, when the grand finals against PSG Esports came down to overtime in Game 7. Strong enough bit of contact, wants to play it by himself the entire length of the pitch. JNAP now has the ball on the wall, he's gonna go searching for a player, but Bluey has avoided him. He's coming on zero boost himself. Picks up 12, but it's not quite enough. And now G2 has an incredible opportunity to finish this off. Block 
from Bluey. The Zero Boost Warrior sets it up, follow up, it's Bluey's to win! And it's gonna be Ferra to turn it all down! The celebrations are on your screen! Congratulations to PSG! TNAPS helped carry his team to a first place victory in the North American Regional later that season, winning the Golden Striker Award in the process. Season 7 was the closest JNAPS has come thus far to winning an RLCS championship. While G2 made it to the Grand Finals, even defeating rivals PSG in the process, they were met with steep competition in the form of Team Vitality, who ended up taking it 4-1. Nevertheless, JNAPS took home a consolation prize in the form of an MVP award, acknowledging the impact of his incredible skills on G2's results. Very peak, trying to take that away. Double demo from JNAPS. Chicago now racing around the corner. Does he have the touch? Can he get it to Rizzo? No, it's denied. Kate up, met by JNAPS in midfield. Now, taking it in. Fairy Peak for Vitality. Met again, and it's turned away. Boom, downfield for G2. Kate up, bad touch, and Gale to get back to it. Scrub killer now. Booms it back downfield. Rizzo. Around the corner. Scrub killer has the demo. Kate up around. Fairy Peak's down. Fairy Peak's down. He remains an integral part of G2's continued success to this day, helping his team clinch the ill-fated Season 9 Regional as well as the Rocket League Spring Series in early 2020. And with G2 signing JNAPS for a multi-year contract, it's clear that he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Now everyone always talks about Garrett G always being there and most consistent, but people tend to forget about players like JNAPS who have always been at that top level of Rocket League. And representing a, an org, a single org for that long, is pretty impressive honestly in most esports so i also may be a little bit biased because he does represent canadian rocket league either way don't forget about jnaps because he's going to continue being at the top for quite some time that is all the time we have though for today you can check out more of our content on youtube and of course on twitter at squad state thank you guys so much for watching i really do appreciate it and for a little overtime action here is your weekly backfire Bing.